Can you hear me? Can you hear me well? Hi, this is Misha. In 2015, I came to the US as a 21 year old. I never had a job. I was constrained legally. I didn't have a work visa. I only had a student visa. And I was generally a kid. I never had a job, no finished education. I was still going to school. I started working at manual labor jobs, basically your minimum wage stuff. I did moving, I did driving, I did senior care, I did accounting, tutoring, Uber, food delivery, Lyft. A security guard, a server, a wholesale marijuana and honey vendor. Then after some time, I switched over to Uber and I had kept driving Uber for three years. Throughout this time, I was going to grad school, tried and failed to start multiple businesses. It was, I think, about five or six. And I freelanced doing design on some very low paying projects on Upwork and like Fiverr. In late 2018, I decided to get a full-time design job. In six months of interviewing, I got a job that was paying me over $75 an hour. I wanna tell you about how I got it and what it took me to get it. But first of all, let's taste some whiskey. We're tasting Chivas, Chivas Regal, 12 year old. Chivas is a blended scotch. You might know it, it's one of the, one of better known scotches out there because it's not very expensive. It's on the nicer end of cheaper whiskeys. And it's just generally nice. It takes you into a slightly different direction that you might get from Johnny Walker's. While Johnny Walker's might be creamy and chocolatey and more slightly more smoky. Chivas is not smoky. Chivas takes you into the more of a highland space side direction. It's more malty. It's more floral. Yeah, I can feel some some floral notes. It has some uh, some light fruit smell. It doesn't have much smell. The, the smell doesn't really impress me. I already, you can probably see that the bottle was not full. I had already tried it before and it honestly did not impress me very well. But the taste is much nicer than the smell. The taste is um, slightly sweet, but not overwhelming. It's a slight kind of a rounded coating of sweetness, and then you get the spiky notes. I could drink it, but it's not, it wouldn't be one of my favorite whiskey or even scotches. No. Let me try to add some water to it. Actually, for those who don't know, when you add water to whiskey, it's just a little bit of water. You bring up the oils that are buried in the whiskey and all of those oils, they come up to the top because that's how it works. Water is more dense, so it comes down to the bottom, it brings up the oils, and you get more flavor usually from more oily whiskey. Uh, I'm not sure how oily this one is. This one doesn't feel very oily, but I'm just curious. I think it didn't make it better, didn't make it worse. Anyways, coming back to how I got the job. First of all, I spent months crafting my resume and my portfolio. 
Second, I sent thousands and thousands of applications for jobs. Uh, you can actually watch a video here about how I did it in practice, how to send over 300 applications per day, which is what I did. I had over 50 interviews, including one company that flew me out to New York. I interviewed there, they flew me back, and then I got the news that I didn't get the job. You can imagine how disappointed and how discouraged I felt. I felt miserable. And then I just kept doing it. Every couple of weeks after every new failure, I had to push myself just to not give up, just to at least keep going somewhere until I got a career advice from a complete stranger. After the guy gave me the career advice, I got two offers essentially after a phone interview. The whole interviewing process can be broken down in three parts. It's a skill, interviewing and uh, your morale. Skill, you either got it or not. If you got the skill, if you're already pretty good at what you're doing, practice interviews. Having a skill doesn't mean that you will get a job. You still need to deliver your thoughts to the interviewer. If you don't have the skill yet, if you're not skilled enough yet, it doesn't mean that you're not talented. It means that you just have to work on it, hone your craft, and you will eventually have the skill. Uh, it'll be better if you get an internship, if you get a junior job and just hone your craft while getting paid some decent money for it. The second part is interviewing. Interviews are not as trivial as your teachers at school might have told you. It might come off easier for some people than for others. You know, some people might feel it more naturally coming to them when they're interviewing. Some people require more practice. I would break it down in six parts. First part is your preparation. I mean, your resume, your portfolio, in case you, if you need one, and your cover letter. Just make your resume or multiple versions of resume if you're applying for multiple uh, to multiple industries or for multiple similar positions that require different skill and you want to highlight certain things. Do the same thing for your cover letter. Make several templates of your cover letter for each one of the directions of positions that you're going to apply for. The second part is preparation as well, but it's more of a verbal preparation because you have to know what you're going to say. Usually recruiters ask you all of the same standard questions. Where are you coming from? What's your background? Uh, what interests you in the company? What interests you in your profession? Just be ready for all of those questions and you can write them down if you want. You can just learn them. The third part is having a structure. You have to have a structure to your interviews and have a structure to how you speak about your experience. Usually it's an introduction, two, three experiences and a conclusion. Um, for the introduction, again, you use your elevator pitch, you speak about your projects, and you conclude it with, some, with something. You might conclude it with why you want to work for this company, or you might conclude it with Q&A. It depends on you. Make your own structure. You just need to have it. The fourth part is adjusting what you have to the interviewer and to the position. So for your resume and your cover letter, we already discussed that you have to have multiple versions. For your standard questions, they're gonna stay the same usually. Uh, for your job experiences though, they will change depending on who you're speaking to. Number five is uh, confidence. And confidence comes with practice. You just have to practice interviewing. Some people, again, they will get it quicker and they might get a job just because they are super confident. 
it plays a huge role. I would say it plays even a bigger role than your skill does. Pretty often, people who are very talented and skillful, they feel very unconfident about their experience and about their skill. They don't feel comfortable talking about it because they know what it takes to actually become really good at it. The last one is the numbers game. Just increase the numbers of your job applications. Apply to more places. You know, there's might be there might be a high chance that you'll get an interview. There might be a 5% chance that you'll get an interview, but if you only apply to 10 companies, a 5% chance means that you will not be called to an interview no matter how good you are. It's less than one company out of 10. If you apply to 500 companies, it will be 25 companies that will invite you to an interview. So just bump up those numbers. The last part is psychological or morale. It's really hard to keep a high morale when you keep getting rejections, when you keep flopping your interviews. Don't take it personally. Don't expect a miracle and don't feel sorry for yourself. You're selling a service. The company is buying a service from you. You are a specialist that they need. You have to show what you're bringing to the table first. When it comes to your salary, you'll talk salary. First, impress the company with what you're going to bring to the table. Keep up your numbers game. Keep applying, keep applying. You know, you failed uh, 10 interviews, apply to 500 more companies, go through those interviews, you fail them, keep it up, just, just keep going. I don't want to be that guy who says that every failure is a chance to learn something. It doesn't count if you learn something but don't apply it. You have to learn something and then apply it next time you go to an interview. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. And last but not least, remember that you only need one 